Hello, look at the crowd. This is great. Hey, Don. Hey, Don. Hey, Don. Today. Hi, Don. All right, I'm going to make an announcement. Hi, Have Don. fun doing these eight weeks. When this eight weeks course is over, there'll be one week break. We will start a new one. Food. It will be food photography. Sweet. All, all right. Um, project 52 may go on hold for the rest of the year. I may not do a new Project 52 this year. I'm going to find out if I have enough interest. If I don't have at least 15 or 20 people interested in it, I'll wait until after the first of the year. Uh, but these, uh, these uh, uh, classes that we're doing are just too damn much fun. So we're going we're gonna to keep, we're going to stay with them. So Sweet. we'll do food. And then uh, the one after that will be people, portraits. And then we'll go back, we'll rotate back to still life, tabletop, food, and portrait. And we'll keep this going um, at least until I'm 93 or something. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Albums. One thing that made me uh, really want to do this is the, uh, the really great work that you guys are have turned in here. I mean, wow. I love it. All right. So are we recording, Don? Yes, we are off to the races. Before we get going, any questions from anyone? Any questions at all? And does anyone have to go right now because they've got, uh, you know, kids in soccer practice or something along those lines? Anyone? All right. We'll just start at the top then. No, we're not. We're going to start at the bottom. We started at the top last time. We're going to go on the bottom here. All right. First, no, we'll start at the top. Sorry. All right. This picture is by Joe Cosentino, who is not here yet. Yeah, I am. Hi, Dan. Uh, you are? I just popped in a while ago. Where the hell are you? Oh. On my screen, I'm on top, in the top row, but I don't know where I'm on yours. Look at that. I didn't realize we had that many people here. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Joe, how did you uh, heat the corn? Uh, uh, beautiful buttermilk, by the way. I don't see the picture. Is this, is this uh, a um, blow dryer? Um, no, it's a steamer. Steamer. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't see the picture on the screen. Uh, that's because I haven't pushed the button yet, Joe. Okay. But, but thank you for <laughs> pointing out my foibles. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I use a steamer. A, a steamer. So you, the steam is steam. from the steamer or you yeah. steamed the corn? The steam is from the steamer. Got it. Okay. How did you get the uh, milk? I just ran. I ran the steamer over the butter. Oh, okay. All right. And yeah. Then I then I put the steamer underneath and let the steam rise up. Yes. Uh, that's the, and that is, by the way, uh, one of the three ways that you do it, folks. Is to uh, number one, use a steamer. You come down. You'll get a little bit of moisture off the steamer onto the corn. And if you do want to uh, put a little uh, something on the corn so that the the steam beads up on it. Uh, you can you can put a little bit of uh, uh, Vaseline, tiny little bit of Vaseline or something on the rub the corn with it. The steam will come down and it'll condense and you'll have little uh, bubbles of, of water. Uh, so steam, you'll heat the butter in place. You can use a blow dryer. Um, uh, you generally what you do is you take something and deflect the blow, the, the blow yes. dryer, so it's not blowing right on, it'll blow the, the uh, uh, butter right off. And the third way is to use a heat lamp, use a little, you can buy them at Home Depot, a little heat lamp, bring it down real close and melt that butter in place. So uh, generally the corn is cold, uh, so you have to heat the butter. You don't want to be right. dealing with really, really hot, hot. This is the second ear I did the day before I did another ear and I had the condensation all over the corn. And it just didn't look good. Didn't look good? No. Yep. So that's why I did this. And then just let the smoke come up the back, the steam come up the back. I've got yep. some where steam's coming up from both sides, front and back. I like it coming up in the back. I'm not sure yeah. I like it in the front. So that's the setup. The steamer's that little white thing there next Got to it. the corn right yeah. there. And then the only thing different from that picture is the grid. The first day I took it with the grid and the steam wasn't showing up that well. So then I took the grid off to get more light, the backlight, the steam that was coming up. 
We yeah. just brought down enough light. You know, you if you if you put flour in your steamer, it'll be thicker steam. Hmm. <laughs> I made that I up. I don't know. That's okay, not true I was at all. I've never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true at all. I'll just gum up the steamer. <laughs> just sure. So don't do that. I won't. Uh, this is this is fine. This is good. Just bouncing uh, off uh, that white card. You know, there's a place for a grid, and there's there's places where they're not. I don't. I hardly use. Uh, grids on my soft boxes anymore. I really don't. Um, I like to be able to focus the light, but I find that I used grids when I had my really big studio and the really 3,100 square foot studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used grids because I didn't want, I wanted to keep it off the walls and everything. Right. But in the smaller spaces, I've just let it bounce. Uh, I like it uh, better. Very cool. And what lens, sir? It's um, my usual, um... 24 to 120 it was about it was at about 100 millimeters okay quite cool very good see it sitting under the white card very good very very good bob morak yes sir nice thank you is this a strobe or continuous light bob it's a strobe strobe and yep. Is it gelled at all, or what are you doing with no, it? It's just a plain old, you can see in the next shot, it's just, a, it's just a strobe sitting there, pretty close. And I've got my little silver reflector, but I, I think in this shot, I don't think the silver reflector was in there for that one. Man, you're shooting to the side, so your, your camera was coming from here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's just really, really pretty. Did you do anything in post? I I cleaned up a couple of, there were some little white speckles here and there. I tried to to fill in the, the dark spot on the stem. And when I lightened it just a little bit, the whole stem went flat. It took out the the dimensions and the details. So I this, went back This in. here? Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me at all. No, I, I liked it this way, so I left it. Yeah. I That's, love I mean, little, it's pretty much straight out of camera. I love these little damaged areas in here. Yeah, the hardest part was finding some good portobello mushrooms. I, I went through like three stores and I'm going through packages and people are looking at me like, ooh, what's he doing? So <laughs> I must have perfection. <laughs> Especially in this time of pandemic. That's yeah. right. I'm not eating another mushroom that has a dent in it. That's just not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Really, but I, I like the way I like the way all the the um, you can see the contours of everything going up or going down. It came out really, really good. Yeah, uh, really super uh, good texture, really nice composition. You know, everything just kind of flows out here, and having this little space up here that gives us a a, a lock on the mushroom, right? Other than you know, we not know how big it was or anything else, so. Uh, I really like that. I love the shading that you have in here. Very nice, sir. Thank you. Is food something you shoot a lot of? Uh, I've done some. I mean, not a lot. I was just, I was just playing. You said get close. I got close. There you go. Getting close is one of the fun things to do. Absolutely. Yeah. My favorite cereal, Judy. <laughs> Raisin Bran. Yes. That was a stale box, so I thought that's a good one before I throw it out. Yeah, might as well get some use out of it, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I used to love it, and then I, I noticed the carb the carb intake on it and was like, oh, well, I can't do that yeah, anymore. There's only uh, 47 carbs per <laughs> spoonful is what it comes down to. Um, yeah, it was really pretty. Good composition, too. Good. You've cropped out the spoon and you cropped out the bowl. Uh, this is quite identifiable. All this is really sharp. You got a little bit of depth of field loss right back there. That's okay. That just pulls us right back to where the action is. This is an interesting composition because I don't think anything stands out as the hero. It's really uh, a, a cooperative shot. It's everything here. 
is the shot. And in food photography, you do that a lot. I mean, you don't want to feature that raisin or that that piece of granola, or you have to, to shoot the whole thing as a unifying subject. Really well done. Thank you. Thank you. Love your shadow. Really good in here. Um, this lip is going out of focus here. Uh-huh. Um, that bothers me. Doesn't I don't think it wrecks the shot uh, at all. But I would say this is where a little bit of focus stacking could have helped you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right in there. Yep. Yeah. Keep it a little bit crisp, but a little bit more modern. You know, ten years ago, out of focus stuff was all the rage, uh, and now focus stacking is is becoming all the rage. So yeah. we do have to. We doesn't mean we. It doesn't mean that we as photographers have to follow the fads uh -huh. at all. I think when everybody zigs, I like to zag. Um, right. But it does, know we, does mean we have to kind of know what the trends are uh, okay. for what we're doing. Really nice, Judy. What, all right, what thank camera you. and lens? Uh, it was a Fuji, my 18 to 55. And I think I was close to 50 on that. Okay. Yeah. And the light is, uh, we have a behind the scenes. Yeah, you okay. can't see the light, it was overhead. Yep, and you just built a great big old giant wall around it. Yeah. Yeah, that little piece of cardboard I'm holding in front of the camera uh, didn't do a whole lot. There was just a couple of uh, flakes that just kind of brightened. Okay, you might have uh, been opening up a little bit of these raisins in here too. Right, right, mm -hmm. I think I did. Yeah. Not, it didn't do a whole lot, but just, just a tiny bit. Yeah. Nicely done. Good Thank set. You. Good set. I like your set. Your set looks pro. It's exactly Thanks. what we would do. Very good. I've been paying attention. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> I love that. I always love that. Josh Crandall. Josh, where are you, buddy? Hello. Yeah. Really? Look at look at your highlight. Dude, you like playing on the edge, don't you? Yeah, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> dancing right on the edge. Man, that, that, that was a third stop over. Look at that. We've got a bright, brilliant highlight there, and we can still see Apple. Nice. Really nice. Yeah, thank good, you. good composition. Thanks. I just try and do something that was simple and quick, and so I just got some apples and oranges and spent 40 minutes finding ones that didn't look terrible <laughs> at the store, and then uh, did that. It, we never really stopped to look, think about how unattractive some of the fruits are we buy until we go to pick one for a, get one for a photograph and you go, wait a minute, have I been buying this crap all these years? I want perfection here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, you got, you got a good one. This is a good orange. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was like the best one I could find. So that was the one I put in the, put in there. The apple looks good over here. The stem looks good on both of these nice crisp stems. And uh, apples look pretty good. These little flecks in here, I would touch them out. Or is it the kind of apple it is? Oh, Those are on the apple. apple. Yeah, it's the kind of apple it is. All right. Yeah. All right. But I could see taking some of those out too. Or finding apples that didn't have them probably might look a little better. Yeah, but I think I think and I don't I don't know apples very very well, but Me are, these, are these Fuji's? I think they're red delicious or something. Okay, I don't. Know. I don't know. I'm yeah. really not an apple expert. I don't think they're red delicious. Red delicious is dark and red. It doesn't have the spot. I think Fuji's and Galas may have the spot. So mm, um, you're probably right. Yeah. No, I'm I'm probably wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably know more about apples than I do. <laughs> but I know like zero. All right. Well, very good. Very Thank good. You. Yeah. And we've got our light coming from a what is up? What is this light? That is this is just a softbox, which is like back left corner. Oh here. Yeah. And okay. then just a white card to kind of fill the top of the apple apple in. So uh -huh. it wasn't so dark and muddy. And then just shot it like that. Well, that works out really nice. Yeah, it did. Love the, the, the little bit of light sneaking in under here. That's very, very, very cool. Gives that really nice dimension. Yeah, it does. Very nice. Thank you. Uh-huh. Ron Mayhew. Yes, sir. 
Hi, Ron. Hi. Are these uh, hey. cherry tomatoes? Is that what these are? They're cherry heirloom tomatoes. Yes. Oh, I didn't even know those existed. Well, I didn't either until the other day when um, I happened on to them. Well, you know, if you reached in and you thought you were getting spice drops or something, you'd sure be surprised when you bit into yeah. it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they don't look, they don't, they don't taste like candy at all. Uh, really like the clean, clean white. Um, I'd bring this glass, the glass part down really slightly. Really? I brought it up slightly. Oh, did you? <laughs> We're right at the edge. If this went to a magazine, Ron, it couldn't print. Mm-hmm. Because there's just not enough, um, there's not enough differentiation between this white and that white. So if you took it down. Well, if you've taken it up, you can take it down, right? Would you do sure. it in my room? Yes, yes, I with a brush, yeah. Just a little bit, and I mean probably half as much as you you brought it up. Okay, mm -hmm. so okay. don't take it back to where it was original because it was probably too dark. This is too dark. I don't want this. I want like that. See the difference? Okay. Yeah. 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 Just a little bit. Really, really nice. Nice high, nice high highlights. Um, now the the highlights on this aren't very large, so let's see your lighting real quick here. Oh, I like that too. I like that too. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, is this focus stacked? It 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 was, but I um, I didn't stack it. I didn't make enough slices. Um, I, uh, in hindsight, I, I should have taken a few more slices, but it it, it came out fairly well. Okay, we'll take those little guys out. The blem blemishes, yeah. Yeah, take the blemishes out. Nothing else is blemished. See, that's the thing. There might be a little one, couple to clean up in there, but then that's the kind of what those heirlooms look like. But those look like little blemishes. We'll take those out. Um, really good color. Really nice, clean white, except that, it's a tiny minor exception, except that that looks white to me, and that looks blue. Is it... I think we need to clean your, your white up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it on my on my computer monitor, and I'm really not seeing. I understand what you're saying, but I'm really not seeing it on on my monitor. I think so. I think the blue is in your shadows. Mm -hmm. I think the blue is in your shadows. We would pull that blue up just a little bit and uh, and make it more neutral, or leave it alone. I don't think it. I don't think, like I said, I don't think it kills it. And blue looks really nice. Uh, blue makes the reds pop. Reds and yellows pop out of blue. So cool, uh, cool with warm in the front. What lens, sir? Um, it was a uh, zoom, but it was about uh, about forty-two millimeter. Um, ISO one hundred and uh, uh, six three f stop. It's micro four thirds, so I get quite mm -hmm. a bit of depth of field with. Uh, okay, and you're. You're using a uh, dark field lighting with a bright white behind it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've never done that before, so um, but I was happy with the outcome. Yeah, it's a nice lighting. It's very nice lighting. Very contemporary, very modern. Go back here. We got a little bit of light coming over the top. That's this area here, folks. Then the other light is coming from both sides hitting the fill cards and, and lighting it up here. Um, and we see that light here and we see that light spilling around there. So uh, nice, nice darn job there, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. All right. Annalise. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. So you really did play with your food or have these little guys <laughs> play with it. Yeah, I thought it would go a little more literal this time. Yeah. What a nice set. Where did you get all these little guys? Um, the, the photographer figurine I had, 
And then the other guys um, borrowed them for my children. Are these um, Lego people? Is that what they are? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. My kids are. My kids are are grown, so I I missed out on the Lego people. We had Legos, but nothing like what kids have today. It's, I know things have changed. Yes, they have. This is really nice. Yeah. Um, you've got light coming from the side here, side front, but that's giving us this texture in the chocolate cake, and we need that desperately. Without the check, the the texture in the cake, the image may may fall a little flat but it's working out very well. Uh, what did you do on the fire? Is this a second shot that you did or is no. this all? There, well, there were only two, photo, two um, images. One was the, the flame lighting the candle and the other one, which is in my comments over the behind the scenes was after I'd blown out the match. So I took quite a few test shots uh, to make sure that I got the right, um, the right speed and everything. Um, but it is, that's all one picture, one shot. Oh, okay. My, in the next image, um, there's the behind the scenes and the comments. I've got the little photo there where you can see uh, the, the smoke after I blown it up. And I forgot to take a behind the scenes because <laughs> I'd been working on it for so long that I, uh, when I was done, I took everything down and I realized I forgot behind the scenes, but I had everything set up still. So I just put a little box there and, um, mm -hmm. Get my figurines uh, up just how it had them. I want to point out to everybody that Annalise had everything there to redo the shot except the chocolate cake. We'd eaten it by that point. I was gonna say, which was <laughs> which was at this point gone. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Thank you for doing this, by the way. Sit resetting it up. So um this yeah, so you are you are getting some light on the top. You're using that, um, is that, it's not a Gary Fong, it's an off-brand, right? It's an off-brand one, yeah. Yeah, um, you're using that and they're very nice. Look how the beautiful shadow it's giving you. Really cool. Yeah, I, I like um, the shadows. Yeah, and you put it in front of this white card, which just amplified the size of the, of the, of the um, uh, light here and gave you those softer shadows. Uh, and then bouncing it into the top, took the shadows and made them very soft, indeed, uh, in in uh, in how they cast. It's just all being lit from the top. Yeah, what what lens did you use? This was a 50 millimeter. 50? Annalise well, is really I saw nice 125. Shot. Oh, that was a type on my point. I saw 125. There's no 124. Okay. Yeah, this is a very nice shot. Good for you. Thank you. I wanted to, I remember you had said before um, about being deliberate with your photos. So I wanted all of the elements to um, relate to each other in some way. Mm -hmm. So the cake with it being a triangle in three. So that I wanted three figurines, um, the tuxedo guy painting on a piece of tuxedo cake and a little painter guy was touching it up at the end there. And then of course we need a photographer to capture the whole scene. So Very nice. I love that. Partner. Connect. I love that that de that deliberate approach, um, the angles, the, the number of people, what they're doing. I love that. I think that's great. And our candle to celebrate our fifth assignment. There you go. <laughs> there you. I'll probably use. I'll probably use this for our our cover shot for the oh, thanks. for the review. Why not? Number five works for me. Thank you. Very nice. Super super nice. Dot. Hi. Hi, Dot. Hi. Hi. Is this is this? Um, it's the underside of a piece of garlic. Is this uh, film or digital? Uh, digital. Digital. I was going for as much texture as I could. This has got to be either natural light or a large scrim. Um, I used a scrim for the first time for this assignment. I used a softbox behind a scrim. I think there's a behind the scenes on the next one. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple of white cards to get some more light. And maybe I should have got a bit of light at the bottom part. No, oh, no, no, no. This is this is perfect. Perfect. Um, I, I see Arnold said it looks uh, Weston-esque. That's the first thing I thought of when I went there, when I went and saw it. Um, yeah. 
it, and that's why I asked if it was film because it really does look very filmic. All right. What did you use to, did you process it in? Um, 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 I did a bit of, bit of uh, Photoshop. I did some um, texture to get a little bit more texture and a little okay. bit of um, I think it's the I texture think. that's making it look like it's got just a tiny bit of, of uh, tech of uh, grain to it. Wow, just a beautiful shot. Have you printed this yet? No, not yet. Oh yeah, print I it. wanted a review on it first. Print it, oh, print it, print it, print it. Oh, thank you. Wow, great shot, just a great shot. How do you print your black and whites, Dot? I usually send them away. Ah, okay. Mm. They, uh, I was looking at a, um, a printer this weekend, this past week. Uh, I'm thinking about getting another printer. I was looking oh, at a yeah. printer and it comes, it actually comes with a, a second set of gray and gray inks. So when you print your black and white, it's using six different colors of gray. And wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> It's two blacks and then four different shades of gray. It, it's amazing for printing black and white. But I understand that if you do that, when you go to color, you can't go between black and white and color because you mess up the, the, the ink heads, get, you know, uh, yeah. start getting crummy. Uh, beautifully done. Just really beautiful. Mr. Hi, Shaw. Hi, Don. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, is this the redone one, sir? No, it's in the comments. It's in the comments. Okay. Yeah, just we scroll down. There the, it is. Yeah, we want to look at the redone one here. Much better. Much Thank better. You. Yeah. Uh, and what we're referring to, folks, is that when Mark put this up for a critique uh, during the week, Several people, including myself, point out that the strawberry just didn't pop. It, it kind of looks dull. The, the blacks look dull. And so he redid it, popped the strawberry just a little bit. Didn't take a whole lot. And now the strawberry just reads great. Uh, what uh, what uh, lens did you use? Uh, this was my 24 to 70 and uh, at 70. Okay. And these are two spoons or is this Photoshop? Those are two forks. Okay. I really, <laughs> they're I literally the forks. forks down, and then I really have to try and balance that strawberry. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Really nice. Thanks, Don. Yeah, pop, this is a great composition. And again, this would make a really, really delightful print. Really delightful. I think so print. too. Yeah. Very cool. I can see, uh, you know, uh, you can show this stuff to um, to designers, et cetera, because uh, lots of uh, point of purchase from restaurant, uh, no, not restaurants, but uh, uh, food markets and stuff. They're all going to big pictures on the wall. Have you seen that? Even the Safeway in my neighborhood now has these great big pictures of fruits and vegetables on the uh, when you go in the fruits and vegetable aisle. So, yeah. yeah, you you think, and when you're doing something like this and you think so graphic, it could be really used for a lot of stuff. Very good. Love it. Yo! Okay. The heck is that, Lauren? That is a freshwater prawn. Okay. Uncooked. Is it alive? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Freshwater, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, someone pointed out to me recently that these are actually bugs. They're like yeah, pretty much. Underwater bugs. Yep. Yeah, I don't like bugs, but I do like shrimp. Um, what an interesting creature. Love the, the, the um, soft color palette that you have going here that little bit of light that you've got right here, Lauren, emanating from right there really sets off the face of this thing or the head, or I don't have no yeah, that's what that is. Um, uh, but it really sets it off and I love it because 
uh, it's obviously done in camera. It's just where it's just a reflection of where your brightest spot on your light is uh, mm -hmm. back there. Uh, and then all of this stuff in here as well. Really, really nice. Even the back, you kept some texture back here, which I'm glad. Uh, without the texture, I wouldn't wouldn't much care for that. But that's really, really cool. And the light blue sets off the yellow of this thing beautifully. Really, really nicely done. I'm okay with this stuff being out of focus because I don't like bugs. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go with that. Uh, really nice, Lauren. What did you use to do this? That was a uh, that was my uh, that was my uh, uh, fifty-five to two hundred and one hundred and thirty-five millimeter. Uh, it had a twenty millimeter extension tube on it at f thirteen uh, one fifteenth of a second. How f how out of the frame here is this softbox? That's, that's the softbox right there. Yeah, how out of the frame is it? Is it going way up here? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably about another six inches or so. Okay. Because when I look at your, I look at it here, I see these great highlights running on the top, which means these guys had to, had to be able to see that softbox. Yeah, up there. Um, and yeah, what you here. don't what you don't see down is that 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 uh, the uh, what that's sitting on. There's another foot closer to the camera. Yeah, right in there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty it's back there pretty pretty far. Yeah. Yeah, really done. Yeah, that's these are great highlights, man. Really, really great highlights through here. Everything everything that needs to have a highlight on it has a highlight on it. That's the what that's what you want. Good job. Hey how long did it take you to shoot a lowly prawn? Uh, that was about three hours of work to, because yeah. I, I wanted to get it set right. And I started out with three and I didn't like the looks of, you know, three separate ones. And it, uh, it boiled down to, I picked the best of the bet, you know, best of the three and just played a little bit with it to get the, the right, uh, the right angle. Did you just say it boiled down? It boiled down, yes. <laughs> oh man, um, I can see. Can you see? Can you see Lauren at the uh, at the meat counter going? Yes, I'd like to buy a prawn. And they go, "How many, sir? Just I just need one." Uh, can you show them to me? No, not that one. No, not that one. Oh, we'll take that one. I mean, yeah, meat no, that, that didn't happen. This that, I actually had to run around the city and finally ended up at a uh, Asian grocery store that sells these in box in two pound boxes frozen Jeez. and uh, had unthought and, and and when you thought you'd shoot a prawn you figured you'd just run down the market and get one no and every just, time it, it, it's so happens so often we think well we're going to go and shoot this thing it happens so often that that thing that we're looking to shoot nobody has right well good job lauren darn fine job Darn fine. Gerardo. Don. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Wow. So, did you suspend the cap? Yes, with uh, two small uh, uh, metal things. Wire, two small okay. wire. Okay. Great highlights here, sir. Nice highlight right in there. You're, you know, in, in product photography, the label is everything. Your label looks great. It's got an, a, a brighter and a darker here in the middle and a brighter over here. So we see the roundness of it. I like that very much. I really like the edges of your rock here. Um, there's a lot of warmth coming from this side that's not coming on this side. Um, yeah, I did that because what you say about the levels. I didn't. One of them has an uh, CTO, and uh -huh. the other one doesn't because I didn't want to contaminate the level. I want to give. I, a, a yep. in. I totally agree with that. What I want you to do is to go back into Lightroom, and take this side of the rock and right here, and this right here. Uh, yeah, 
maybe this right here, okay? And just paint it with the brush and very slightly warm it. Very slightly warm. Because we, we, only, we only want to warm it. We don't want to make it look like light. That looks like light here, right? That's light hitting it. There's really, this is all ambient over here, but we just want to warm that ambient up. We've got all this red going on. We got to warm it up, okay? Just a little okay. bit. Yeah, that'll, that'll make it cool. What, uh, what lens, sir? Uh, 24 to 240. That's all one right. of the backstages, and I have another one from the top. So you can see what I use okay. right there. Uh, it's one of those candles that blow sparks in the case. That's the same stuff. I just put it behind it and let it on fire. Well, you did a nice job with the blend here. Is this really that hot? Is it pretty hot sauce? The light? No, the, the sauce. Fire? The sauce. Oh, no, no, it's not that hot. I, I eat oh. a lot of hot sauce and that just, okay. you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, anytime I see a sauce with habanero in it, I think, yeah, <laughs> that can light you up pretty quick. <laughs> no, it's not that hot, but the, the idea was to give it the sense of hotness. And uh, Gerardo, I have not seen a Coleman softbox in a long time, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about it. <laughs> That, that <laughs> is DIY here, folks, at its finest, right there. It works, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it does. Perfectly, the CTO. Yeah, it does. It works very well. <laughs> now there'll be a run. Remember David Hobby made a big deal about using uh, shoot-through umbrellas? I think I'm going to do a whole website on using Coleman Cooler soft boxes. I think... Then there'll be a big run on Coleman Cooler soft boxes. Yeah. I'm gonna get them. I have a beauty of these too. Oh, made what, of uh, coolers. What's it made out of? Cooler, another Coleman. <laughs> a beauty dish. <laughs> Great. Wait a I have it right here. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice work, uh, sir. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, we went right by the sushi. Whose sushi is this? Adi. Adi is sushi. How you doing, Adi? Oh, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Yeah. Well, anyway, in some respects, um, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed with the uh, well, with the uh, the sushi itself, my, my wife said uh, she would make me some, and I said, "Oh, this, yeah, don't." Uh, we we've, we've had a busy week, and I said, "Yeah, just just relax. I'm going to go down to the uh, store. We've got a grocery that has a, a sushi uh, 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 sushi bar." And I, I picked this up, and well, anyway, the um, as you can tell, the uh, uh, oh, I I forget, but I I think it's not. It's the California rolls didn't uh, turn out uh, as round as I wanted them, but uh, yeah, they, I were said, packed, Let's do it anyway. they were packed into a container. So yeah. the roundness is gone too. Right. That's so, that's exactly right. So it looks like supermarket sushi, but that's okay because it looks like supermarket sushi. That's what it is. First thing I would do is get rid of this because even though it is a knot in the wood, it looks mm -hmm. like a stain. Oh, okay. That's that's what my wife said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. your your wife was right, sir. Um, yeah. The other she thing, really is. whenever you have, yes, I know that. That's how my wife is too. Oh, God, lots. Of, she's always right. Um, whenever you have a bowl of liquid like here, mm -hmm. you want to either like stick a stick in it so you get some ripples in it, right? Mm -hmm. Or blow some bubbles onto the side. Yeah. So that it looks fresh because when it's just, you know, like stagnant there, it doesn't have any life to it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take a little eyedropper and squeeze a few little bubbles. If the bubbles don't stay in the, is this soy or teriyaki? Soy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's soy. Um, yeah. If the bubbles don't stay, take a little tiny bit of dish soap, mix uh -huh. it into it, and then the bubbles will stay over here. It'll look a little fresher. 
Okay. Uh, when you first pour the soy in, you'll get a bubble here and there. That's what we want uh, to do. Uh, you've got this green. What are you, is this supposed to be white or are you shooting it on this very slight uh, it, tan? It's actually a, uh, a, a tan board. Okay. It's kind of a, right. uh, uh, not, not exactly, well, not a taupe, but uh, the more, more beige. I think you could go for a little more contrast in here. Okay. But just a little bit. It's really overall, it's a nice shot, nicely composed nicely exposed. Uh, we don't want to really me mess it up. Um, when you put your board down, be, now, now we're getting into weeds with, with um, detail here, okay? Okay. Stay with me. When you put the board down, make sure the line of the board follows the line of the cloth. You see how it's yeah. a little yeah, bit that's, crooked? Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, the bamboo... Uh, uh, um, the, yeah. yeah, that's yes. that's a bamboo cloth. So yeah, and it's over, the same way over here. It's it's like it's it's skewed out a little bit. It's mm -hmm. Kind of touch it back to make it absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but overall, good shot. Mm, uh, thank you. Yeah, and your your um your lens, sir. Oh, I I use my uh, uh, sixty millimeter macro on uh, my seventy one hundred. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Octobox through a scrim. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and the uh, and, and actually I ended up doing about uh, oh forty shots all together, um, uh, both initially from the uh, from the front like you see it here, and then eventually uh, around to the side. All right. Good. Yeah. You, when you got them there, you might as well shoot the ever loving heck out of them. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kit. Hi, Don. Hi, Kit. Juggling pears. First of okay. all, you got a, a little something going on in your post, right? Yeah, I'm still learning that stuff, so I thought I'd try it and practice it. You got a little texture or something going on? Yeah, texture in the background. I think that little highlight on the top is actually on the pear. Right here? On the that upper top edge that you were pointing at, right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this looks all of this looks pretty good. This is a fun shot. How did you? Uh, are they suspended or did you just shoot them and put them in? I shot them. I suspended them, but I ended up taking them separately. So I got three separate shots for the pairs, and then one for my arm, and then combined them. Okay. And remember, folks, when you say when you take uh, separate pictures of your your pairs, what Kit did here is obvious. Is you got to keep them in relationship to the light. You have to because no matter which way this pair was, if you had flipped it that way, this highlight, that highlight, and that highlight all have to be facing the light. I've seen people do this where they they move around, they take different pictures of the thing from different angles. You can't put this up if that highlights over here. It's not going to work. It's our shadow side. So well thought out, Kit. Yeah, it took me a while to to adjust them and stick them on a piece of wire so they, they kept falling off. And I didn't want to run out of pairs from dropping on the ground. Yeah, that's true. Let's look at your lighting. Very you have cool. a flash to the side and a flash behind and then a white card on the right. So back here is a flash and there's a flash back behind this scrim, right? Correct. And white card. Let's go back, look at the, the image. Okay. How close is the light to this scrim material? Pretty, I'm going to say pretty close. Yeah, it was mostly lighting. Yeah, I, I adjusted it to be almost directly behind the pair. Got it. And it was probably six inches behind the scrim. Yep. And what that does is it gives us this hot spot and then it falls off really fast. Um, that's cool. That's a, that's a really nice shot, Kit. Thank you. I like it. Lenser. 
Um, it was a zoom at about, the pairs were at about 65 millimeter and the hand was, my arm was at 24. Okay. Well, it looks good. I had, I did have to like free transform the pairs so they were, seemed the right size for, for my hand. Okay. Um, let me ask you how things are up in Salt Lake City. Uh, well, it's finally cooling down a little bit. Um, other than that, it's, we got smoke from California, which I'm sure you guys do too. We're getting it, uh, it's uh, hurting, and we're not getting it like you guys are, but it is hurting our visibility. But yeah, uh, we're, we're gonna cool all the way down to 106 today, which is- Yeah, we've been, we've been in, the, in the 90s. We had been like 98 to 100, but- Well, my wife's free, because I don't have time to go down and get our sweaters, so I'll have to, not a, out of storage, we'll have to suffer through the next three days of under 118. Really nice. Uh, Okay, thank you. Really nice. Um, Terry. Terry, oh, Terry's not here. Terry shot kitty food. All right, I like that. Uh, Hi, I'm, oh, I'm here. She is here. Yes, she is here. I don't I see her up here. anywhere. What's going on? Oh, I got another thing there. So I was, so I was, um, I thought, oh, I'll try to get playing with food. I'll try to get my cat to eat, <laughs> but she's not, a, she's not a food driven cat. So she could give a shit about food. So, um, if you don't feed I, her for three or four days. They'll, they'll listen. Yeah. Or if I'm out of town, the, the kitty sitters say, oh, she was so hungry. So I put up the white mat board and the mat board behind it. And, and I used, uh, the kitchen lights and the light coming in the window. And I said, oh, look at here's your, you know, dinner. And I put her there and she freaked out and ran off and tipped over the bag and it spilled. So we're playing with food. <laughs> okay. But these bags are better than the old ones, but there's still a few things that we got to watch out for. One of them is that little bend right there. Okay. And they, the, the, it's got to be, look cool. That's okay. a little sharp here. Maybe yep. smooth that roundness out. This looks great. Okay. Very serpentine. Uh, looks great. Um, you would just simply for the bag have to make make sure that somehow we didn't cut off the T there so yeah. close. Um, yeah. And what is that in in instinct? Okay. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. instinct. So we've got a we got to see that little bit of space on the other side of the T. Remember, no matter what it is that you're shooting, ladies and gentlemen, your label must be absolutely as perfect as possible, unless the art director says it doesn't matter, we'll shoot it this way. Um, that little hot spot, I get rid of that. Where? Uh, right here. Oh, geez, yeah. Yep. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. Your, your, the cat food looks good. Cool. Um, the little spill here, that looks fine. And your your very nice clean white background here is good. Okay. Yeah, I tried to get her eating food, but that was ridiculous, so <laughs> I had to give up. <laughs> this is her there. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. She she's not she, she's not a very touchy freely cat, you know. You can't pick her up and play with her, set her down. So <laughs> it was an exercise in futility and giggles. Well. She had fun being stalked. Yes. Nice, Terry. What lens? Uh, my 28, one, 24, 105, and it's about 90 millimeters. All right. Good? Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Carla. Hi, Don. Hi. How are you? Very good. And you? Good. So these are macrons. Is that what these are? Yes, exactly. And where are they from? Uh, they're from Costa Rica, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> Beautiful. I, you know, I'm, I love the highlights. Thanks. I actually didn't, didn't know if it looks too flat. No. That was no, you're, no, there's, that's a nice highlight there. 
And that goes all the way over to a very dark background. So no, I think we're fine um, here at that for sure. That highlight looks great. A little highlight there. Uh, it's dark there, dark in here. We've got plenty of darks and shadows. Your contrast looks good. Um, okay. Your background looks almost white, but I think it's probably white enough. You might it, it wasn't to... meant to be white though. <laughs> it's like uh, one of the surfaces that I made myself I had like a little bit of very light blue. So, but it, I think it doesn't show much. <laughs> it's supposed to be a light blue? No, it's supposed to be white, but underneath the white has a very like a light blue color. So it's, it's one of these DNY, you know, surface I made in myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing any blue. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I love your, the, the sharpness in the crumbs and things here. Very, very clean. Um, what was your aperture? Do you remember? Oh, here we go. Um, uh, right F13. There. F13. Okay. That's really nice. Love your colors, the color choice that you, you did as well, because I really like, you know, these three, the same color. Uh, and then we have this sort of serpentine thing that goes down through it, and you chose a very neutral color for the top. Um, I love that little line there, these falling out, uh, and then having these, all three of these sort of like interrupt that line a little bit. Okay. Very clean. Thanks. Good, good shot. Thank you. It took, yeah. my, it took me four hours to get there. <laughs> but how many? Uh, how many of the cookies did you eat after you shot it? Uh, like ten. Now and you then go. I took some for my family too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got. Is that uh, plexiglass? No, that's a scrim. Okay. And it's, a soft. It's, it's, yeah, it's a strip softbox. It's uh -huh. a one by two. And then it has uh, three, uh, three white cars. Yep. Surrounding. Oh, I see the blue in here now. Yeah, it is very subtle, huh? Um, very subtle. Got, you built a wall, a wall of light around them. Uh, but you still have, and even though you've got these white cards here. Yeah. These white cards are never going to be as bright as your main light. So, and that's that's a good thing because that gives you your beautiful texture in here had all of those other things been lights instead of reflect reflecting cards uh the tendency to blow it you know be light on everything and it would just be too much um okay. i love the way the texture shows up from the light that you use and that's one of the things i like so much about scrims because they can be very powerful and still quite quite snappy okay well thank you yeah what uh what lens i saw the lens up there uh, it's a uh, 24 105 and 105 at 105 okay great yeah thank you very much thank, thanks a lot thanks. Uh, i don't know why you did that sorry hold on So the next up has got to be these guys. Wow, Arnold, real nice, man. Thanks. Um, I originally wanted to boil the artichoke, but I felt that if I did, I would have lost definition, I would have lost color. So I left them raw. Okay. And, um, well, the idea actually is this: I wanted it to be some kind of like a, you know, a candlelit kind of atmosphere. Okay. And I started out with really close up on the artichoke, and it would just has no contacts. It was just dead. So I wound up doing this high contrast, uh, highly saturated look. Um, it's just a single light. It's basically a, um, a snoot with a honeycomb grid on it, and that's all I have there. Yep, that's it. You can see that. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yep. 
Wow. A couple fill cards going on here. Yep. And then I just have the LED light in there just for the focus because again, I shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. um, so all the reflector, uh, the, the bounce card, the monitor is just to control how much of the tonality the, the, the shadows is coming up. And yeah. And this is, this is not bounce light here. This is from the strobe itself. Right. Just grazing. It, the yeah, it's, just... yeah, it's very tricky on how to angle that properly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how to position it on the plate. Because if I didn't do that, it's, it's either too dark or just too dead. Right? So I had to find the proper angle for that one to, to get the texture on it. Yeah. Well, you did. What was your and, lens? Uh, 105 macro, okay. Uh, if you look at my behind the scenes, I actually had a different tomato on it. And I don't think it worked too well because I only had two tomatoes, right? It it's, doesn't have the dynamism of having two small ones on top. So. Yeah, the I, composition is fine. It's strong. I like it better than the single one. Right. Yeah, me too, because I, I started out with just the, the two tomatoes in there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's too... It's too symmetrical. Yeah. You know, it was too symmetrical. It, it didn't have the dynamism on it. So I, I replaced that. These uh, back here, um, I would have, I, for me, I would have moved this one forward just a little bit down into uh, here. So they don't have that straight across symmetrical look. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Kind of bring one forward. Let it break into that line a little bit. All right. Uh, really nice shot. Oh, thanks. Arnold. Solid. Man, good color too. Thanks. One grid. Lovely. Oh, this is nice too. JT. Hi, Don. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. Love the color, the brightness, all the, the reds just pop, the greens pop. And what are those almonds? They are. Almonds and olives. I know they just—it's what I had. <laughs> oh, okay, because because I'm not I'm not feeling that. <laughs> not feeling all but shoving the almond in the olive could be a little weird. Could be good. Could be good. What is this, Rob? Uh, blue cheese. It is. Oh, actually, any, I think it's blue cheese. Blue cheese or makes anything taste lot. better, so we're good. <laughs> Good composition, Jennifer, overall here. Um, you're cropping that one out and cropping this one out and then allowing yourself to crop out the knife. It's really good. Not cropping out the paddle makes it the star of the show. It is the star of the show. And then, of course, the olives right dead center here. Probably more tend to think of the olives as the star of the show than um, anything that was cropped like the cherry tomatoes. But the cherry tomatoes hold their own because of the color, yeah. you know, we can, we can move them up to the top and, and minimize them by cropping them, but they're red. They're always going to dominate a little bit. Uh, well done, Sha. I love the highlight in your knife. Thank That's you. That's really, really nice. And the mint leaves look good all the way through. Yep, yep, yep. One thing about one thing about mint leaves you have to be very careful is if you pick them fresh, sometimes the mint leaf will turn over upside down. Oh yeah, they wanted to. Yeah, yeah you got to turn them back this way, even if you have to take them off and stick them into to clay or putty or something. We never yeah. want to see the inside of the mint leaf. It's always the top because it's greener, it's prettier, it's got the lines and stuff on it. Yeah. All right, so let's look at your, is this your lighting over here? It is. All right, let's see. That's to the left. So a little tiny bit back uh, and uh, to the left. Yeah, it's to the left. It's kind of angling over top a little bit. Um, uh -huh. 
So I had to tone the left side down in the post editing process. Works. Works. What is that uh, marble that it's on? Is that a, a plastic? It, yeah, it's just a sheet. Um, what are they like a printout? Uh, like a, I can't like think a, of what they're called, but um, they roll up. Yeah, they're like a plastic. A vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice one. It's very, it's very, it's very subtle. Yeah, that one's not bad. I did go buy some marble um, uh, tiles from mm -hmm. um, like Lowe's or something, and they work good, but they're too small. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this worked out nice. When you're grouting those marble tile, use toothpaste. Oh. Yep. You put the toothpaste in and you just smooth it down with a, a damp cloth and then you wipe off the tiles very, the tiles very easy. And now you've got perfect grout, uh, white grout. You can shoot it and then it just comes right apart and you just clean the toothpaste off. That's so awesome. Run to the dollar store and get, you know, a couple of tubes of dollar toothpaste and, and you're good to go. Yeah. Cool. Really good. Thanks. Really good. And uh, 50 millimeter, ISO 100, and F16. So everything is nice and tight. I love the highlights here. Nice and tight in focus. Good shot. Thanks. James. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, James. <laughs> what the heck are these things? Those are pistachio nuts. I broke open a bag, I poured them into um, a bowl, and then I tried to take a photograph of them with a macro lens. Wow, that's very cool. You got plenty of depth of field, F14, okay. Uh, you're not using strobes as this window light? Um, no, it was two, uh, two, two panels. It, it, LED panels. Okay. Uh, I had originally taken uh, taken the photograph at an angle of forty five degrees, but but it was such a shallow depth of field that one of the pistachio nuts was slightly out of focus, and it just ruined the whole shot. And so I took it di directly above. I made myself a C stand out of a cheap microphone. Okay. And um, it just seemed to work a lot better. Everything's in focus and um, yeah. There's your, your stand. Yeah. Well, what did you do to get the contrast in the nuts? I'm Actually, seeing lots of contrast. I've done um, almost nothing to it because um, I bought myself a new computer this week and I can no longer use Lightroom. And so, um, <laughs> this, and so this was just thrown together in Photoshop Elements. And uh, I've not actually done very much to it. Um, wow. Um, I put it, a bit of contrast on it. and um, This just does not look like it has a lot of contast to it here. And we see yeah. so much of it here. Yeah, really I know nice. what you mean, but um, I've not actually done very much to it. Uh, I didn't have the time. And as I say, um, uh, I can't use Lightroom anymore. And so this was all done in Photoshop Elements. What kind of computer did you get that won't run Lightroom? <laughs> I've got the old standalone version of Lightroom. And I've just bought wow. myself a new iMac, and the standalone version of Lightroom doesn't run. No, it does not. IMac. Well, I didn't realize this, and um, no, uh, the only way for the, you're going to have to go with the uh, the subscription Photoshop and Lightroom. Yeah, I decided that um, I would try it differently, and uh, yeah, you can. Uh, and if you're and if you don't want to do the Adobe uh, subscription thing then I would really seriously recommend Capture One. Yes, yeah. Because Capture yeah, One that, is yeah. a hell yeah, of a sorry. great program. Absolutely yeah. a stunning program. Yeah. Uh, and you own it. You buy it, you own it. Yeah. But they do get you on updates every 
16 months, there's a new update. They're going to stick you another 60 bucks. But um, that's really good. Are you using Affinity or, or an old standalone Photoshop? No, um, I just loaded it all into the Photos app. And then I exported it and opened it up in in Photoshop and yeah. um, and just pressed uh, uh, enhance. So you're using That's Photoshop great. six still? No, I'm using Photoshop Elements. Oh, Elements. Okay. Well, Elements Elements actually is Photoshop six. Yeah, this is yeah. what I thought because I used yeah. to have a full copy of of Photoshop. Yeah, so. it's pretty. It, uh, Elements is yeah. pretty. I just don't like the interface on Elements. Yeah. I would tell you to take a look at Affinity. Um, pretty darn good program for fifty bucks. Yeah, really okay. good program for fifty bucks. Nicely done, sir. Well, wow, thank you very much. Getting up close and personal with pistachios there. <laughs> I actually had a, uh, uh, I actually had a lot of fun taking. So. Good. It's supposed to be fun. That's the whole point of this stuff. It's supposed to be fun. That is beautiful highlights here, Alona. Is Alona here? Where is Alona? Well, Alona, if you come and see the uh, replay, love the highlights on this thing. I can't remember. Oh, it's a Kawano fruit. Um, I thought it was something different uh, that we've seen, but that's when you cut these open, you get these beautiful, beautiful highlights. Look at that. Uh, that means you've got a very large right there scrim on the side. So we're getting that giant reflection. Looks so pretty. Great texture in there as well. So um, I also 640, 100 millimeters. All right, beautiful. Oh, got this in focus, but we didn't get that in focus. Darn, really want that to be in focus. See if you can tweak it up just a little bit. Could be fun. Daniel Franks. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, Daniel, this is a super shot. What are we, uh, seltzer water? Um, Some kind of sparkling water. Okay. And I... I, I'm guessing that the sparkle, the little effervescent stuff, just sticks to the orange for a, a brief amount of time. Yeah, that's right. Wow. I've got the, uh, the orange slice pinned up against the inside of a uh, square uh, flower vase. Oh, you're using, okay. Where is there a, is there one over here? There's no behind the scenes. Oh, okay. So you got a square flower vase and it's on the front side or the back side of it? The uh, front side, yeah. Front side. And then a piece okay. of blue paper behind the vase. Okay. Wow. Did you tape it down or what's it? Um, I used a little, uh, you know, those uh, clips that you can stick with a magnet on the refrigerator door. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. a little uh, A-clamp kind of thing. And I just clipped the uh, orange uh, slice to the inside of the... Uh, the base. Yeah. So that made it have just a little bit of space between the glass and the orange. Yep. This is yep. The clip and that let the, the effervescent come right up in there and not get lost. If you put it against the other side, there would be way too much sparkling water between us and the orange. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, cool, man. Thanks. And light? Um, that's ambient from a large, uh, Sliding door on the left, and also to, to the back. Wow. So I'm like in a corner. Uh, it's a room with uh, two uh, big windows behind and to the left. Nikon D700, 135, with Canon 500D macro filter? Yeah, the, the 500D is a screw-on. Uh, filter that reduces the f minimum focusing distance. So with the 7200, it's like a 18 inches minimum focus. Oh, okay. But with the screw on macro filter, you can get down to like six inches. Very nice. That's a cool shot. Thanks. Daniel, you're very good. Thank you. Good shooter. Stay with it. Definitely stay with it. Keep kicking butt there. Jerry, I love your lighting here, Jerry. Thanks, wow. Tom. 
really, really pretty. Large yeah, oh, yeah. highlights, large highlights, but very soft presentation. What is this? It's on. It's on a, a timber board that I that I painted. Great highlight. I like the way this comes right into the into the picture. Um, it looks random. I'm absolutely certain it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, very very nice. Little things. Uh, you know, I'm always looking at little things on pictures and little things what are what get me going because it's like the big things are easy to see, but that little light on the back of that one, a little light on the back of that one, even that one's got a little light on the back of it. The way you put the shadow side of this that could easily be easily be lost, but you put it up against this thing, so we see it. This one could easily be lost, but you put it up against that so we can see it. And this one sh juts out into the black, but you gave us highlights all along here so we can see it. That's, those are the things that make me excited because those are the little things that take the, an image from being a good image uh, to a really, really good image. Dare say uh, even a great image. It's just, it's the little stuff. The big stuff, everybody can do the big stuff. It's the little stuff that we have to work on, which we were talking about, um, I think, I think it was, uh, was it Dot? or Annalise talking, about, uh, Annalise talking about being super deliberate. That's what we do. Uh, 80, mil, 80 millimeter macro, F8, let's look at your behind the scenes. Okay, oh, you using a big flag in front of your, your light. Yeah, it's a softbox with, a, with a, a, a transparent one in front of it again, yeah. And then two, Two flags here to make a nice narrow little bit of light to come out on those uh, blackberries. Yep. That's very clever lighting. Really, really like it. I like what your little fill cards are doing right here. Those little guys are doing that magic with those little backlights. Uh, that one's doing the magic on that. Whoa, that one, uh, those two that are up in the air. Um, how long did it take you to do this, Jerry? Oh, many hours. <laughs> um, is is have you done still life like this before? I have some, yeah, but it's it, I, I, this is focus stacked, so it's probably only the third or fourth time I've focus stacked. Well, you did a good job with it. I didn't even notice the focus stack. The only time yeah, you're supposed to notice really focus stack is when it's done poorly. <laughs> that's when you notice it um really clean but you look at it and you go well yeah that's a lot of depth of field for that close that's a lot how many um how many shots in, the, in your stack five shots five yeah really really super nice thank you make a nice print man oh yeah let's try it yeah what oh that's it yeah that'd make a nice print uh, so many of your photographs today, folks, uh, uh, well, almost everybody's photographs today would make very nice prints. Uh, I'm a big believer in making prints. Um, I'm, I'm an, I guess I'm old-fashioned in that, for me, it's a photograph when I can hold it. Uh, until that, it's a, it's a file. And um, when I, I can hold it in my hand that it's a photograph. And printers, uh, really good printers are not that expensive anymore. You can get a really good artisan, Epson Artisan uh, 7 ink printer um, for, I want to say four, 400, 450, somewhere around there. And man, oh man, do they make some great, great prints. Absolutely stunning. All right, let's, let's get into the next, the next assignment here. I think what I can do here, where is my oh, Hey Don? Yes, sir. This Lyle. Somehow mine didn't make the uh the album here. Okay. Is it in the media? Should be. I thought I got it in the I'm not very uh efficient with Facebook, clearly. 
this is the one that, this is where I don't know how we get back when I'm here. I don't know how to get back to the damn. Anybody know from looking at the pictures in the album, how we get back to. The new Facebook is very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Usually there's an X here and you X out and you're back at the beginning, but there's no X. And if that's, uh, that's just full screen. Unless you do the hit, hit the home button. Home button here? Yeah. Well, that takes me to my home page. I just click on the groups icon and then it should you should be able to choose the group that you're in. That's usually how I do it. Yeah, that's yeah, but I can't get I can't get to a group icon. If you look on the top there, there's a circle with um three right yeah, here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, All right. Okay. Yeah, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, I hate the new Facebook. Ditto. I thought that was a dog's foot footprint there. Oh. <laughs> Pet <And> lover. Then... <laughs> <laughs> You're an animal lover, clearly. Have you ever, uh, have you guys gone here since we started this, gone to the media page and looked at all the really great photographies on this website? Yep. Yes, it's very yeah. great. <laughs> a it's lot, really, a it's lot, <laughs> a lot of really good stuff. I, right, right there, Don. Look, tomatoes, right at the top. No, up, first row, right there. The tomatoes next to the, this. This one. Yep, yep. That's it. All right. So, whose are these? Hmm. Should those have been in this? in this class? I don't know. That was somebody who posted about five pictures, uh, the tomatoes, those, uh, the cake, the, from okay. the tomatoes to the one right below it, were all on one page. Oh, okay. So they all, uh, that was just somebody who posted to the, to the group. Okay. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Thanks. Love the open feel to it. I love the fact that you just set the hell with the back, let it go out of back, go out of focus. You didn't try to get a little bit of it in focus. Just it's gone. This is your star right here. Um, silverware Leo looks great. Thanks. Really, really great. Um, uh, and this little guy, what is this? Are these stuffed cherry tomatoes? No, they're they're big tomatoes. They're stuffed. They're oh, okay. you know, yeah. It's just in a small bowl. Okay. I love stuffed tomatoes. Really nice. Um, let's look at you behind the scenes here. Turn this one off and click on this one. So this, I I took that picture first, and then I. I did that Thursday night. Last night I did the tomatoes and I had a, a silver scrim, I mean a silver bounce card on the right shooting back at that scrim and, the, and then a strobe behind the scrim. So everything's the same pretty much. Are we shooting this way or are we shooting sideways? We're shooting straight down that table. So straight this down is the taken. Table. Okay. Right. So big soft box here. That's just a big four foot homemade scrim. Scrim? With, yep, with a studio strobe behind it, kind of up, up high, shooting okay. kind of across the top. Okay. And then uh, nothing over here. Nothing that, over here. And a but shiny a, board down here for bounce. Correct. Shooting, it was standing up, shooting straight across. Nice. Look at that. Yeah, that big scrim. Look how pretty the light is on the tomato there. Then we just got that little kicker from the silver card. Look at that, even in the in the out of focus area. Look how it opened up the shadow. I think the first thing that attracted me to the shot was how open your shadows were because it makes all the light look open, airy, very friendly, very happy, very clean. Um, all of this in here, and that's your silver card just opening it up. And the fact that your, your tiny set uh, is vastly dwarfed by your light. So this light is just sweeping over the top of everything there. 
Uh, did we talk about uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, lens and it's a uh, Nikon D810. It's the 100 macro. Okay. Yeah. I like that. You know what I like also is I like that we get down in the shadow, we see that little bit of texture there. What kind of paper is that? Like a watercolor paper or? That's actually a uh, tablecloth, white tablecloth. tablecloth. Okay. So it's got a little bit of a old fashioned uh, texture to it. Correct. I went to Vinny's and bought three tablecloths for 25 bucks. Got a black one, a yellow one, a blue one, and a uh, white you'll one. Use, you'll use the heck out of them. Need a steamer. You can, yeah. the, and the best way to hang them, uh -huh. uh, uh, don't fold them. Get up, get a, a, a rack where you can, you know, just a little thing and just clip right. them. Let them hang. That's a good idea. Every time you go to get one and you go to use it, you won't have to steam out edges and corners and all those kinds of things. Just let them hang. Well, that's great. Right now I'm in an Airbnb and been in an Airbnb since November. I don't have a lot of room. No, well, you can, you can fold them until you get back to your space or whatever space exactly. you're going to have. Sure. Can I just ask a question about this image? Sure. Um, sure. Um, the black card, is that to stop the reflection on the fork? Black card. It looks to be a, a black card oh. on the lower right-hand side. No, that was just from another shot. There was no black card. There's a, where there was a silver card standing up on the right-hand side. And the scrim, everything else is the same, except just put, it to, put the tomatoes there instead of those carrots and put a silver card standing up on the right-hand side, reflecting back to the left. This is a shiny um, curtain material back here, a shiny shower curtain or something? That's my <laughs> curtains to the outside. Yeah. But they do have a, sh a shine to them, right? Um, they're kind of sheer, that sort of, yeah. If you stood here and you flash this flash, I'll bet these light up. Probably. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. These things are going to see this light up and it's good. And because it's kind of a sheer shine, I can see a little bit of shine on it. It's going to uh -huh. light up. That lit up background here and this big guy right here, that is what you're seeing here. Oh, cool. Happy Otherwise, this would, this would just go black, you know. Well done. Thank you. Nice. Any other questions from anybody about this or any shot? Hey, Don, I do have a, uh, you, you mentioned uh, to hang like the, the tablecloths and stuff like that. Yeah. I've got uh, some vinyl uh, backgrounds that I, I have. Yeah, and they were all rolled up, and they were impossible to get to flatten out. I ended up going to Harbor Freight and getting tarp tarp clips. Okay, they're, yeah, they're they're screw it. You know, they they've got a screw head to them, and you can tighten them down. And that's what I've got my plat my vinyl ones hung with, and they work absolutely fantastic. You can hold up to like three or four of them in one clip. Yep. No, it's the same with seamless paper, folks. If you ever buy seamless paper, you cannot lean seamless paper. It must stand vertically straight up. If you lean it, the paper will start to warp with gravity and pull it. And then when you pull it down, you'll get these little slight bumps in it. Never lay it down because then you'll get a flat spot. Um, and um, I'm here to tell you, it takes a while for the flat spot to go into it, but you'll never get it out it won't come out. Your, your paper is permanently damaged. So get something where you can actually just put it up there and clip it to the wall vertical. Seamless paper used to be huge uh, in, my, in my world. We had, uh, when uh, Dave and I finally got rid of the studio, uh, combined we had uh, nearly 60 rolls of seamless paper uh, many of which we had to laugh at because they were brand new rolls that only been used once. Like the client says, yeah, I want to use this. I wanna, let's, let's shoot this on lime green and kind of go, okay. And you go and buy a roll of lime green and like, I'm never using it again. <laughs> you know, oh, and they bought it. The client always buy, buys the paper. You know that, right? The client always buys a roll of paper. It doesn't matter how much paper they used at all. 
If you're going to do something on paper, the client buys the role. You'll go broke buying rolls of paper that you never use. Because they're like, they were $25, $28 back in the day. I imagine they're somewhere around 50 or 60 bucks a roll now. Anybody know? Anybody bought it? About 80 bucks, I think is what I saw. 80 bucks for a roll of uh, nine foot? Yeah. Yeah, see, 80 bucks. I mean, the client buys the, the paper. If it's a if it's a a roll of white paper and you got half a roll left, pull it down, charge them eighty bucks, and replace it with a, a new roll. That's we cannot be in business by by fronting stuff like that. So, um, and if you're going to buy one roll of seamless, if that's all you're going to own, I would totally recommend you get the um, Thunder Gray. Thunder Gray. That's what I use the most of forever. I could turn it black if I wanted to. I could turn it light gray if I wanted to. Um, I, if I put a gel on it, I could turn it red. I could turn it blue, anything. You cannot gel white. If you put a white seamless and you shine a red gel at it, you're not going to get red. You're going to get very hazy pink. If you want red, you have to shoot it at something dark, maybe something red already or black. You can turn black seamless red with a red gel. But you can't turn white chroma key? anything. What, what about chroma key, Don? Um, I never really used it a lot. You, know, you mean like uh, green screen? Yeah. I I never really used it a lot. I've, I never really used it. I doubt I I doubt if I use it more than twice. Uh, we have that. We, there they make a green seamless or a chroma key seamless. You can buy and use it. Um, never did. Uh, I um, I like to shoot things. If I'm going to cut them out, I like to shoot them against a very uh, uh, a similar color than what I'm cutting them out with, right? So if it's a uh, if I'm going to put it on a light background, I want to shoot it against something light. If I'm going to put it on a dark background, I want to shoot it against something dark. So those edges fit fit in that that space. Uh, and if I can get a if I'm going to put it against a blue sky, I'll try to shoot it against the blue sky background. It's so easy for me to cut things out after doing it for, you know, forever, um, that I just do that, Lauren. I've, I've never used the chroma key. Okay. Good on. Yeah. I think we missed one more. Uh, Phyllis, she submitted five images with behind the scenes. It's Phyllis, under is discussion. Phyllis is Phyllis here? I don't oh. think she is. Okay. Uh, she posted it on the discussion. Did she post it to get a... She did um, not post it on the album. Yeah, but did she post it to get a review or did she just post it? Uh, yeah, she was one of the first people who submitted hers for the okay. food. Oh boy, oh boy. My daughter went somewhere. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, these are the ones we were looking looking to. Okay. Um my daughter went somewhere with her husband this weekend and left us with the baby, a four month old. And I'm I'm just too old for this. <laughs> Beautiful baby, wonderful baby, but she has two she has two speeds happy, smiling, and sleeping, and screaming loudly. Um, that's it. She, she just, she'll be real happy, and then she'll go, uh, and then, Bruh. so, all right, Phyllis, beautiful stuff here. That's very nice. Let me look at them all real quick. We'll come back and do a little critique on one or two of them here. Love the design here. What are those? Are those donuts or are they mushrooms? I think they're cookies. Some sort cookies, of cookies. Some kind of cookie? Cookies. Looks okay, beautiful. Oh yeah. Beautiful use of window light there. Phyllis, beautiful use of window light. Um this shot, 
needs to come up. We got to get this brighter. We got to get these tomatoes are very dark, dark, and we can look at the plate and we see that the plate is supposed to be white and it's not. Let's pull this whole thing up in Lightroom, Capture One, whatever you use. Let's pull this whole thing up at least a half a stop, probably closer to three quarters of a stop, and we're going to like it better. We're going to get better reds and better oranges right now. It feels a little dull. Let's, uh, let's fix that. Easy fix. Those are great. Beautiful texture all the way through here. I like the light in the back, a little bit darker up front, so I have a real nice feeling of backlight all the way through, even the cookies themselves. Uh, side light, when you're working with the side light, Phyllis, keep your subject farther away from the background because right now the subject's coming right up to the background and giving you shadows on the background. I'd rather have the shadows on the surface than on the background. Uh, great light for doing, for shooting this. I love all the little orange stuff from this powder that's left on the, uh, the griddle or whatever that thing is there. So that all looks really good, but let's just get it pulled away. Don't put it uh, up next to your background. You'll end up with weird shadows. I think your background's too busy, but I think it's a good shot. The light is beautiful. Light coming from the side, beautiful highlight right here. Uh, letting it go dark over here, but not losing the texture or the detail in the dark side, good job. We, we don't want black food. We don't want food that has no texture to it, that just disappears. Gotta feel that texture. That looks great. Uh, and that's, uh, that's just lovely. That's just, uh, that, that light for this cake is, is mysterious uh, and fun and perfect. Very well done. Very well done. It's hard to it's hard for us to see, but um, there is, you know, that's the edge of the picture up there, and this all this stuff is in 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 uh, Facebook, um, so that looks really really good, Phyllis. Kept the detail in the whites here, nicely done. And thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot for, for catching that. Arnold, I appreciate it. All right, any questions? Let me, um, let me go in here real quick. I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna go here. We'll do a little magic behind the scenes here. I'm gonna turn off the share and go here. Might as well do this while I'm thinking about it right now. And get down into. You guys enjoying this? Absolutely. Yeah. Very much. Much. Sure. Very much. Yeah, this is fabulous. Good. Good. Looking I forward hope. to the food session. I hope you uh, you take it take the the ideas with you and and are able to uh, you know do a lot more with it. Almost everything we talk about is ap applicable to anything: product, food, even portraiture. Yeah, workshops. Here we go. Lighting for dimension and shape. Come on. There we go. Who was it that just got the new iMac? Who was it? 
Uh, well, it's me, Andrew. Andrew, um, um, how long did it take you to get it? Uh, I went to the store last Saturday and I walked out of it, uh, out with it 30 minutes later. Ah, I, <coughs> I ordered a new uh, laptop and it won't be here until mid-September. If, um, if you buy the uh, standard spec model, you can walk out of the shop with it. Ah, okay. Uh, and how much RAM did you get? Um, it only came with um, eight, but I've ordered another 32 to put okay. in. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. 32. Yeah, those, without 32 megs of RAM, you don't get, or gigs of RAM, you just don't get the oomph of it. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I'm getting the spinning wheel um, a lot of the time because it just hasn't got enough RAM in it. No. And 32 is, is uh, probably overblown for photos, but. Um, it's not very expensive, and, uh, and I thought uh, more's better than. Um, now you, I'll tell you what. What what will happen? Are you? What do you use for a browser? Safari or Chrome? I use Safari, but okay. Uh, so Safari doesn't take as much as Chrome. But what's really nice about thirty-two gigs of RAM is you can have Photoshop and Lightroom. Yeah. And InDesign, uh, and your browser all open at one time. Yeah and nothing slows down and that's really important so this is the class folks <laughs> lighting for dimension and shape so i want you uh, to enjoy it and uh have a blast and uh, we'll see you guys next week have a good one don thank you oh, no. very thanks, much. Bye. thanks guys thanks, bye. 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 bye thanks a lot tons of fun Enjoy Good. that little munchkin. Yes. <laughs> so my wife was like, oh, I was called out of town this weekend. Bummer. <laughs> Bye, guys.